we're moving along now. Speaking of Geelong Soccer Club, they will be in, in action on, on Saturday night in the at Stead Park in the State League One local derby when they host the club of our next guest. And it is an absolute pleasure to welcome to the show Karaya Soccer Club striker Angus Chapman. Good evening, Angus. How are you doing? G'day, Tonchi. Good, thanks. How are you? Uh, great. Fantastic. And um, fa- first of all, mate, welcome back to the show. I think the last time we had you on the show, you were uh, either in England or you were bound for England. I, c- I can't remember. I think it might have been last year or the year before. Yeah, a few years ago now. Um, yeah, I think I was on my way headed over to to England. So, yeah. Before, we, before we talk about what happened on the weekend, and, geez, that was that was a fantastic result. Talk, let's talk about a little bit about England. How was your... Uh, how was your uh, experience over there? How was your time over in England playing football? Um, yeah, I, I loved it. Um, obviously, unfortunately, injuries probably played a bigger part than than I wanted to. But um, yeah, I was playing playing football five six days a week and learning a lot, and eventually, obviously, becoming a better player because of it. So yeah, loved my time over there. I mean, you are of English background, so that would have obviously helped, I guess. Um... You know, uh, from from a, from a, I guess a lot of the bureaucratic point of view, from the citizenship and that sort of stuff. But culturally, I know, I mean, England and, and Australia are very similar. But when we talk about football culture, there's 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 a massive difference there. How did you find that football culture when you first moved there, and how did you how did you how did you adapt to it? Um, I guess, as probably everyone kind of knows, the Football is such a big part of yeah. England and obviously um, the amount of teams and the amount of people that follow, support, play. So it kind of just is there every day. It's everything they talk about. It's on all the TVs. It's all yeah. around. Um, so, no, I, I loved it. I was straight into it, you know. We were training five, six days a week and, yeah, I was learning from from all different parts and, yeah, it was really, really enjoyable. What were some of the clubs that you were there at? So I played uh, three years at Barnsley in the academy and then I also played for a lower league team, Guysley, before eventually coming back back home. Yeah, yeah. So compare it to, say, say you, you played a few years at North Geelong in the NPL system. So what we refer to here in Australia as the academy system or the NPL pathway, I guess. Compare that to, say, the standard, the intensity, the level of aggression, I guess, um, with the academies over in 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 the UK and and more specifically Barnsley, how do you, how did you how would you compare the two? Um, well, I think a massive part is the the obviously the funding and everything that gets supported into the academies in England. Um, you have you know under twelves, under thirteens team training three four times a week already at that young age, um, and when then obviously when you get to fifteen sixteen, you become full time. It's we. The class as scholarships, but we're basically apprentice footballers. Yeah. Um, obviously, wanting become to become pro, um, and it's just you know, it's every day. It's every day nine till three, nine till four, instead of you know a training two, two or three training sessions at night. When you know, it's just it's just not the same. And yeah. there's a there's a big gap and kind of where we're we're lacking as a country, and that's where we've got to get to. And, and the training sessions themselves, do they go back to basics and, you know, do skill sessions one day or is it strength sessions another day? Or is it just simply the same old, same old every day, you know, warm up, do a drill, play a game? Is, how does it work over there from a structure point of view? Um, it's a bit of a mix. Um, obviously, when the, we play, usually played on the Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you'd have your Sunday off and then you'd come in Monday and it was a little bit of a lighter session, but you'd still train. You'd probably work on more your individual stuff. So your strikers go do your finishing. I don't know your hold up play, stuff like that. When your defenders might, you know, focus on their clearances or 1v1 defending, stuff like that. Tuesdays used to be your bigger sessions. So two, two and a half hours, big areas, lots of distance, kind of get the, the Ks in the legs before the game. Yeah. Thursday became more match training, so patterns of play, um, basically how we want to play coming into a game on, on the weekend. So it might be like an 11 v 11 for 30 minutes just to get our structure and kind of everything 
going in the right direction. Yep. And Friday was just getting you ready. So lots of mini games, lots of, you know, short, sharp stuff just to get you ready and focus for the game on the Saturday. Mate, um, how did it end up that you ended up coming back for, um, and signing with Karayo? Um, um, obviously, you wanted to come home. Um, but before Karayo, there was a little bit of a segue uh, before that. But how did you end up at Karayo and ex- explain to us that? Yeah, so when I first came back, I signed with Danny Nong Thunder mm-hmm. um, and was really happy there. I played uh, six games and then unfortunately had another ACL injury. Um, and then when I was recovering from that, I was doing all my kind of individual stuff that I needed to do, strength, um, fitness, stuff like that. And um, my dad, Mike, was was goalkeeper coaching at, at Carayo. And it was just a nice little kind of step in for me to start yeah. ramping up my um, my training to, you know, do some finishing at goalkeepers and a little bit of movement and, you know, kind of be amongst the team almost a little bit. And then from then on, I kind of just started – integrating into trainings um getting used to the boys doing joining in and passing drills and then from there on i loved it and yeah made the decision to sign there permanently yeah well you signed a few weeks ago um and on on this on saturday just gone by you scored your first goals for the um um for the eagles and we've got a little bit of highlights there in the background but uh going to rda reserve is always a tough tough task at the best of times but um, at the time, you were the second last place and coming up against second placed Westgate. And, um, mate, 6 1, you scored two goals. What a result. Take us through the game. Yeah, I, I mean, it kind of started in perfect fashion. I think when I got told after the game, I think we scored our first goal within 30 seconds. Um, and, our, and our first three goals were within about 15 minutes. And we were just. We were just on form. Everything seemed to be working well um, and it finally seemed like everything we've been working for in training kind of all came together and, yeah, it was a fantastic performance and fantastic result. Yeah, now uh, um, Ivan Biskin, it was his little bit of a farewell there because he's going on a four-week trip to Europe uh, with the family, but uh, it was a good sending off for him, that's for sure. But um, is this is this a bit of a turning point, you reckon? I mean, we've got a tough game coming up this weekend, and we'll explain to, um, uh, very shortly about that. But um, it, like, look, with seven games to go, you Karai's now jumped to third last spot. Um, so equal amount of points as second last placed upfield. So, I mean, the danger isn't over as far as uh, safety from relegation. But do you feel that the team sort of, um, you know, turned the corner with this result? Look, I'd like to think so. But I also think we've been in and around it all season. Um, we've actually conceded the least amount of goals out of any team in the league. So it's just kind of getting that final piece of the puzzle, which was to, to put some in the other end. And obviously it, it worked well on the weekend and we got six. So hopefully we can keep keep that form and be clinical in front of goal. Yeah. So after uh, this this Saturday night, big big local derby against um, Geelong at Stead Park. Then after that, it's an away trip to Strathmore, the bottom side. And then um, I think I think it's a home fixture against eighth placed uh, Sydenham Park. So there's certainly winnable games. Uh, although this one on Saturday is going to be a tough one. Um, are you looking forward to it? A, a big local derby, big local crowd, no doubt. Um, atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric. I think come Saturday night under lights. Yeah, it'll be really good. Um, nothing better than a local derby in Geelong. Um, as you said, under the lights, get a get a big crowd in, and yeah, it should should be a good game. Looking forward to it for sure. Yeah. Now your old club, or both your old clubs, actually are struggling at the moment. North Geelong, and uh, uh, when you where you spend a bit of your junior time, you're um, struggling at the moment. But also um, uh, Geelong Rangers, where you started your football and also played a little bit of senior football and broke into senior football, they're struggling. But last week they got a really good result against top side. Um, Keylaw, uh, uh, Keylaw Park. So hopefully they can get out of it as well. Um, have you kind of been surprised coming back to Geelong and you just sort of see some, some of the teams are doing really well, but they seem to be in the lower state, like the State League Fours and State League Fives. But all the clubs that are kind of placed in the higher divisions seem to be struggling. And I'm not sure what it is, but do you have a, do you have a, a thought as to why that may be the case? Um, look, it's it's hard to to put a kind of 
focus on one thing. Yeah. Um, but I know there is a lot of clubs with a lot of money up in Melbourne paying a lot. Um, and look, unfortunately, that attracts big players from MPL clubs and especially in State League One, it's a really tough league. Um, you've got, you know, the transfer window for MPL clubs and if for whatever reason people fall out of that, they kind of drop to State League One. So you've got players that probably are playing below their, probably their standard playing. So it's it's a good competition um, and obviously that filters down throughout the whole State League. So yeah. it's, they're, they're good leagues and for whatever reason this year, there's a few Geelong teams struggling a little bit, but um sure it's just a blip for this season and next season it will be much much better but we seem to have so much generating so much good quality uh, talent in the junior ranks i mean we we saw 12 possibly 14 kids boys just boys in the under 15 under 16 state teams um so they're doing really well we're going to be talking to uh, uh john topic about the yeah, an under 13 geelong girls select side that did really well at a melbourne competition so from a junior's perspective, we seem to be doing really well in churning out some quality, quality players and products. It's just at the moment, unfortunately, not translating into that senior senior um, area. But putting all that aside, on Saturday, it's going to be a huge, huge um, game, a massive crowd we expect. Hopefully, the weather's going to be quite nice. It's been, <laughs> they're forecasting pretty crap weather for the rest of the week. Bit, bit like England, I guess. You, you, you would have felt really at home with this sort of weather, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't doesn't kind of compare with the English weather, that's for sure. Don't mind no. a little bit of rain here and there. <laughs> there you go, dull and dreary every day, I suppose. Mate, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, great to see you re- having recovered from that that ACL uh, knee injury and uh, banging the goals in. This is that's what we want you to see you happening. And uh, and yeah, Saturday night should be an absolute fantastic occasion. So. Uh, calling the entire Geelong football community to get down to Stead Park and take in what should be a fantastic game of football. Yeah, exactly. It should be, and I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah, thank you very much for having me, Tonchi, and hopefully see you around on Saturday.